Hi, I'm in Hong Kong and I've just landed, come off my flight from uh, Adelaide with Cathay Pacific in their business class. I say I was, uh, was very impressed. If you haven't seen that review, please check it out. I'm uh, here at Hong Kong Airport for the next 10 hours before my next flight uh, through to London's Heathrow. It's a point trip, hence the long layover. This is what was available. Good thing is though, it's in first class. My first ever first class flight with uh, Cathay Pacific. Really, really looking forward to that one. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna check basically the airport out and uh, the various first class lounges as well, I think. Can I just say, from my uh, last sort of 20 minutes wandering around having a look, this is one of the best airports for uh, plane spotting. There are so much activities. There's runways pretty much on either side. Uh, planes everywhere, it's fantastic. In a previous video, I had been critical of Hong Kong Airport for its lack of signage and unhelpful staff. It appears though that serious efforts have been made to turn this around. I found the signage much better and there were plenty of information staff around, so it was a much better Hong Kong experience this time around. I'd be silly not to, wouldn't I? Let's go. During the course of the day, I moved several times between the two first class lounges. However, to make this video simple, I'll just show each lounge in turn. The Pier First Class Lounge is located downstairs near Gate 63. It is stunning. first class lounge this is where you get your free massages and the day beds now the day beds are uh, actually very very nice look at this it's a view overlooking the runway right on cue Thai aircraft coming in there that'll be a triple seven The shower suites in this lounge are excellent. And so is the bar. Cheers. Right near gate one and two is the wing. It says business class lounge, but there's a first class lounge up there as well. Let's go and check that out. The Wing First Class Lounge is located on the mezzanine level, overlooking the gate so it has great views of the aircraft outside. The two lounges are about a 20 minute walk apart, so great for burning off some calories and justifying your lounge consumption. This lounge is also very nice, with various seating areas, a bar, workstations and lots of good food. There is also a full restaurant, but I didn't try it. cool thing about the Wing First Class Lounge is the cabanas. Have a look at this. This is my home for the next uh, 90 minutes or so. There's a shower right there. One of the cool things about these cabanas is there's an ironing service. You put what you'd like on, in this case a shirt for first class, on the hook here, and there's a secret button right there. So you press that, you shut the door, and magic. I hardly ever have a bath, and at times like this, I wonder why. This is brilliant. And voila, one iron shirt. Brilliant. That feels a lot better. That was great. And it's time to fly. 
as luck would have it. My gate's about a 20 minute walk away, so I reckon that would justify dessert on board. I'm getting lots of exercise today. There are just six first class seats on the Cathay Pacific 777, spread over two rows in a 1-1-1 configuration. This means every passenger has lots of space. The design of the cabin is not as private as you would find on say Emirates or the Singapore Airlines suites, however once in your seat it does feel very private. As you would imagine the seat was really good, basically it's one massive and very comfortable armchair. It is so wide that part of the seat back folds forward to provide an armrest. The timber finish on the suite gives it a nice refined feel. It's certainly a very nice way to fly. In terms of storage, there are no overhead lockers in first class. Instead, each seat comes equipped with a good sized wardrobe where you can also store your hand luggage and hang your clothes. Other than that, there's plenty of space to spread out, but not too many compartments for your stuff to get lost. As this seat design is now getting quite old, it doesn't have many of the electronic bells and whistles that you'll find in other airlines. For example, the seat control is not the most responsive and there's only one power point. And the lights, when they're controlled via the switch, only have one setting. I did find out later on that uh, using the remote, you can dim those individual reading lights. But these really are minor things. Overall, I really love this seat. Our departure was delayed out of Hong Kong by an hour due to strong tailwinds. Basically, they didn't want us arriving into London too early. As a result, the crew worked hard to get dinner service out as soon as possible once we were in the air. First up though, there was a drink from the bar. In my case, an old favorite, gin and tonic, accompanied by a crab meat appetizer. In first class, meals tend to be events with a very strong focus on the presentation and quality of the food served. In this respect, Cathay is no exception, with dishes served individually on Noritake fine bone china. I'll show the menus for this flight in full right at the end of this video. Whilst I'd love to tell you that I ordered and ate everything, the reality is that it was very late and I'd already been on the road for 22 hours, therefore my body just needed sleep. As a result, I opted for just a few light dishes. Caviar was on offer, but I've never been a big fan, so I skipped this and instead started my meal with a simple but delicious cherry tomato and burrata cheese salad. I followed this with some harissa lentil soup. At the time of ordering, it was a very smooth flight, but just as the meals were served, we hit turbulence, which made eating the soup quite a challenge. It was pretty tasty though. From here, I moved straight to dessert. Strawberries marinated in rose water syrup. Concerned that I would go hungry, the crew also suggested some mauve and pick ice cream, which finished the meal off nicely, as did the pralines. The Cathay Pacific First Class Amenities Kit is provided by Aesop. The case itself is a nice practical design and it's filled with everything you'd expect. Regular viewers will know my love of in-flight pyjamas. They just make the flight far more comfortable. You get a better sleep and also they keep your clothes fresh and crease free. And obviously on, uh, on this Cathay Pacific First Class, you've got your own decent sized closet to put those uh, clothes, your hanky clothes in. So this is it. 
these are the Cathay Pacific first class pyjamas. It's a pretty good thing my brother's not in this flight because I reckon if he was, we'd all be Kung Fu fighting. Very, very comfortable. I've worn them all flight and they come with matching slippers. When it comes time for sleep, the crew converts your seat into a warm, comfortable bed, complete with a mattress cover, oversized pillow and soft quilt. It was as comfortable as it looked and I slept for a solid six hours. Probably the nicest thing about flying first class long haul is waking up in the morning. You've had a good sleep and for the remainder of the flight you just have the space and the time to do whatever you feel like. This cabin is so spacious, private and calming that you could probably do some early morning yoga if that was your thing. Personally I outsource all the yoga to my wife so instead of being active I relaxed in bed, enjoyed a lovely pot of Earl Grey tea and put on the Zen playlist from the Cathay Entertainment System. I did eventually manage to do some work though. The Cathay Entertainment System is pretty good. In first class, good quality Bose noise cancelling headphones are provided. The system itself is easy to use using the remote and there are plenty of choices. I did like the audio playlists and can definitely recommend waking up to the Zen one. This aircraft had external cameras but no Wi-Fi, which is probably a good thing as it allows you more of an opportunity to escape the world. In keeping with my lazy indulgent morning, I opted for breakfast in bed. This started with some fresh fruit, which led to muesli and yoga. Toast and Scottish preserves were next followed by eggs of my choice. I went with scrambled. It was a very nice way to start the day. Then, just before we started our descent into London, I finished it all off with some freshly made espresso. I always recommend a window seat flying into London. Whilst this morning was a bit hazy, there was still plenty to see, including other aircraft, Arsenal's Emirates Stadium, the London Eye, Wembley Stadium, and we even got a quick glimpse of Windsor Castle on the way in. Overall, this was an excellent and indulgent flight. The crew were very friendly, attentive and eager to please. The meals hit the spot and the seat and bed were very comfortable. These were frequent flyer points very well spent and I consider myself very lucky that I've been able to experience it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and if you haven't done so, please check out my channel and subscribe. There are lots more reviews on the way. In the meantime, as always, happy travels.